Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Kunal from AWS, and this is Teddy from Aftership. Thank you, Teddy, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. So Teddy, can you tell us briefly what Aftership is doing? So uh, Aftership is a, pla uh, it's a SaaS platform to help the online merchant and marketplaces to keep track all their shipments and all over the world. So right now, we support more than 500 carriers in more than 17 countries. And so what are your challenges that you're facing? So uh, as a SaaS solution, we also need to offer very high SLA. So our SLA is 99.95% uptime. So what we're trying to do is to, um, to support the high throughput, billions of requests per day, but at the same time to maintain the SLA. Previously, we are using the VM to run on the spot instances to support our architecture. But the problem is uh, it don't scale very fast. So there's a few problems there. So firstly, uh, the VM scale in minutes, but we are looking for some solution that can scale in minutes second. Uh, second thing is about the calls. We want to uh, really optimize the uh, VM instances or basically the resources to support our services. But uh, as you know, the VM, we cannot really 100% utilize it. So the third one is about the um, uh, cost management, the infrastructure. So it doesn't matter how we do, we still need to using our DevOps team or engineer to monitor the application uh, and also the uh, VM instances. For example, we need to patch the OS and also to uh, monitor the disk space, for example. And so this is the solution? Yeah, so what we do is actually there's a two component here. So the first part is a contained with a one API gateway, first Lambda, first SQS. The second component is the second Lambda with the SQS. So what is the reason behind having two separate Lambda functions and SQS? Yeah, um, that's the reason for that. Uh, I can explain it uh, one by one. So let's focus on the first uh, component here. Because as mentioned, we are need to support a very high SLA for the uptime. So as long as the user they made the request, we want to achieve a goal that we can respond to the user very quickly. So basically, the first Lambda, what it does is, when he receives the request through the API gateway, it will put the uh, job, I would say, the body payload or the request in the SQS. And at the same time, it will respond to the user uh, as soon as possible. Since Lambda uh, having a very high SLA, and also the Lambda can scale in millisecond level, I think that really exactly what we're looking for. So in your first Lambda function, it's basically a pass-through function that takes the request from user through the API gateway, put that in your SQS, and immediately respond back to user. Yeah, and we also use a first SQS as a buffer. So in case of any failure on the Lambda function, we can still support that. Great. So what is the second Lambda function doing? Uh, that's more interesting because uh, we want to make sure that uh, we can uh, respond to data fast. I think that's already achieved it. So what we want to do is uh, for the second Lambda, we want to be triggered by the SQS, which is a synchronized process. And at the same time, it can make the request to the external party. For example, we are using the uh, partnership with a different uh, courier or even the uh, shopping cart system. So it doesn't matter how fast or how long does it take because that's not the key concern here. The key concern here is talking about the reliability or we want to make sure that if that anything goes wrong, we will know it. So if the Lambda uh, detect anything goes wrong, it will automatically put the job or the request in the second SQS. So the second SQS, we uh, use it as a dead letter queue. The main purpose for that is we can keep uh, monitoring if anything goes wrong, we will see it from here. So if any failure happens in the second Lambda function, you can just monitor that from the data the queue. Yeah, exactly. So what is the number of requests that you are taking at peak? So uh, as mentioned before, uh, right now we are having about uh, 5,000 to 6,000 requests per second just for one system or one component of our application. So usually for the peak time, we are talking about the three to four times more. So I would say uh, 20,000 to 30,000 requests per second. And you are not having, have you encountered any issues with this architecture? Uh, not exactly. That's why we are happy and to be here. That's great. So uh, have you thought of any alternatives apart from using a serverless approach? Yeah, actually our team tried to explore the Kubernetes. Uh, but the problem we found is uh, although it can scale fast, but the problem is still it's running on the VM. We cannot, as I mentioned before, we cannot really 100% optimize the usage. And also we still need our team member to manage the cluster. Okay, so what are your future plans? So uh, we want to focus on building the product. So we want to try to use more uh, SaaS solution or even the past or any other uh, uh, service that provide the AWS. So that our team can really focus on building the product rather than the technology. And leave all the heavy lifting to AWS. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you Teddy very much for sharing with us your architecture. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.